Here's your lineup for the now today. There's an entire group of unlikely workers that could help save lives through early cancer detection. The new training you can be a part of that's bringing beauty and health together. And delivering meals to seniors is more than just making sure they have a hot dinner. Why experts say it helps with mental health as well. And you may have heard people say they are going on a dopamine fast. A psychologist explains what that means and how it can help us improve our mental health. Thanks, Annie. This is the Now Indy. I'm Amanda Starantino. An Indianapolis man living on the city's southwest side is looking for answers and wants to share a warning. After his dog went missing and was found dead, Randy Campbell tells RTV6 his dog Kiba went missing Friday. He checked animal shelters and posted on Facebook but found him dead in an alley the next day. The dog has multiple injuries on its front legs. Campbell shared the update on Facebook and received a mean and hurtful message from someone he believes may have killed his dog. He says he thinks the person may try to hurt other animals. Be aware and keep an eye on them. You know, these, these people, people like this, I mean, they target animals like that. Randy has filed a police report about this incident and is hoping the person who killed his dog will face some sort of punishment. We are learning more details about an officer-involved shooting that happened on the city's south side early Saturday morning. We now have a timeline from Metro Police detailing the moments that led up to that incident. Just before 3 a.m., southeast district officers were dispatched to an attempted carjacking. The victim said two men attempted to take his vehicle at gunpoint. The victim drove to the intersection of Wedgwood Drive and Lacey Drive to wait on officers. Then around 3.30 a.m., the responding officers spotted two guys matching the suspect's description, walking along Stop 11 Road. Police say one had a rifle and did not comply with the officer's commands to put it down. And we are told as additional units responded, the officers fired their weapons at the man, hitting him and disarming him. The second person, who police say was a juvenile, complied and was taken into custody. Medics arrived and took the suspect, who was shot, to the hospital in critical condition. Two investigations are now underway, a criminal investigation and an internal affairs investigation to ensure the officers complied with department policy. Indiana University is testing the use of license plate reading cameras for parking enforcement on its Bloomington campus. The year-long project began in November and is aimed at figuring out how to best implement the new parking system. The campus is switching from hang tag parking passes to a system involving license plates registered by the parking permit holder. License plate readers are already used for parking enforcement at other campuses, including Purdue. IBS officials are encouraging more families to participate in the district's meal services during breaks. Free breakfast and lunch will be offered at more than a dozen sites this Thursday and Friday. The program is not just for IPS students. Any child under 18 can get a meal. You can find a full list of meal sites and times in this story on the RTV6 app. Kevin, a cloudy day out there. Uh, the gray doesn't help, does it? That wind is strong. Temperatures much, much colder than we were 24 hours ago. We've talked about the transition for a while, but after seven, eight days of 50 degrees or warmer, uh, this gets your attention for sure. 34 in Lafayette, temperature four degrees warmer in Bloomington. These are about average for this time of year, but after we've been in the 60s on a couple of occasions, it's quite a different story. Just want to show you the impacts of the storm system from central Minnesota all the way to the northeast U.S. where they're dealing with some snow and some freezing rain. For us, as the colder air pours in, we'll have a few snow showers around tonight and then again tomorrow with a quick moving weather system, but it will not impact your Tuesday night or New Year's Eve plans. There are a couple of flurries. Some of this may or may not be reaching the ground. Temperature from Peru 32 to 37 in Bedford. They'll change very little this evening. The wind will stay strong and cold, gusting to 30 miles per hour. And with the cloudy skies, temperature Temperatures fairly steady here for the next several hours. We're hearing from witnesses inside a North Texas church where a gunman opened fire, killing two people this weekend. From the moment the gunman entered West Freeway Church of Christ, one parishioner says she noticed him right away. She says he looked like he was in a disguise. I see him sit on the pew behind us, and you know, something was just telling me something's not right. I told him I said I just I don't I don't feel comfortable. I feel like he's like dressed in um, like beard and, and that that's a wig, it looks so fake. And so I just kind of kept looking back there. 
As soon as the gunmen started firing, armed church members inside shot and killed the suspect. There were nearly 250 people inside the church. Texas officials say the Good Samaritans undoubtedly saved lives, and they were part of a security team of volunteers. Texas changed its firearm laws after the 2017 Sutherland Springs Church shooting that killed 26 people. But in Texas, licensed gun owners can legally carry in places of worship as long as the church allows it. Churches must notify their members if they ban guns. And most states allow licensed gun owners to carry. However, at the same time, many churches still consider guns inappropriate. The Faith-Based Security Network is a membership group of law enforcement and faith-based security operators protecting houses of worship all across the country. Now we talked to the president who was on his way to Texas to be with the church where the shooting happened. What I want to do in White Settlement is listen to him. I want to hear him. I'm not going there to try to share any great words of wisdom. I'm going there to learn from him. So Carl Chin has studied about 1,700 incidents of violence at houses of worship. Now he says the majority are linked to domestic disputes, robbery, or personal conflicts. We have this westernized evangelical view that as long as we've got a cross over the top of our building and some kind of a inspirational name over the door that God will protect us. And that's just, that's just not accurate. The evil does enter our sanctuaries. Electric cars are praised for being more environmentally friendly, but some places are making them more expensive to own. Ahead, a breakdown of what's to come for electric car buyers. And Keller, right now. This is the Now Indy on RTV6. Two people are dead following a shooting at a gas station in Lafayette. One of them killed by police after opening fire on deputies. This happened just after 7 last night. At the Family Express on Old State Road 25, police tell us they were called to the store on reports of shots fired. When they arrived, they found one person dead and another armed by the gas pumps. When they tried to detain the suspect, we are told shots were fired and the suspect was hit. He died at the scene and right now two Tippecanoe County Sheriff's deputies deputies are on paid administrative leave while Indiana State Police takes over the investigation. And in southern Indiana, an officer has been arrested accused of domestic battery. Shortly after noon on Sunday, Indiana State Police were contacted in reference to a possible battery that occurred at a home in Lexington, Indiana. After speaking with the victim and suspect, officers arrested 33-year-old Shane R. Gibson, a member of the Scottsburg City Police Department. Investigators say Gibson was off duty and not in uniform at the time of the alleged incident. He is now facing a felony domestic battery charge. Doctors are issuing a new warning ahead of the new year. The flu is here earlier than normal and you need to take precautions. Normally the flu peaks in January and February. However, this year it arrived earlier than normal and the influenza B strain is already being seen in patients. The strain isn't normally seen until March. Also, the respiratory virus RSV is popping up. Well, the new year will bring some higher fees for car owners. At least eight states will have new or higher registration fees for electric vehicles. Most fall between $50 and $200 every year. But the fees are supposed to help make up for the money that's not collected in gas taxes. That money usually goes towards maintaining roads and building new infrastructure. The electric vehicle fees that are put in place really are punitive toward EV owners um, and also just are not going to make a dent in um, the, the road fee uh, gaps that we're seeing. Consumer Reports took a look at this issue. Now, they were concerned electric car fees may discourage people from buying them and hurt efforts to reduce vehicle emissions. Only 2% of new vehicle sales in 2018 were electric-based. The group found that next year, 18 states will be taxing electric vehicle owners two times more than what the average owner of a gas-powered car will be paying in gas taxes. By 2025, 26 states will have electric car fees that are three times higher than average gas tax fees. Most of the states that have the most punitive fees have the lowest levels of um, EV ownership currently. And so it also strikes us as a, as a way to discourage EV ownership rather than addressing a real funding shortfall that's being created. Consumer Reports also pointed out that owning an electric car still comes with overall savings on fuel and maintenance. Well, the key to beating cancer in many cases is early detection. 
a five years, maybe a 20% um, chance of someone being alive um, versus, you know, if you catch it early, a 98%. Ahead, the unique idea to bring beauty and health together to save more lives when it comes to skin cancer. Board. RTV6 is working for you. Checking the news feed, a new report says Juul employees are ignoring a vaping ban at offices. The Wall Street Journal says the company put the ban in last year. It went as far as threatening to take away bonuses or even firing people. However, employees are reportedly not complying. The cost of shipping packages is going up. UPS and FedEx are both adding charges to any parcels over 50 pounds. Those extra charges used to be only for packages over 70 pounds. One report says this could affect nearly 15% of packages. Well, have you ever wanted to go to Japan? Now you can go for free, but there is a catch. Japan Airlines is offering a free ticket to 50,000 people. You have to register for the frequent flyer program and you won't know where you're going until after you apply. It's an effort to get people to go to other cities other than Tokyo. Well, when you hear the words cancer, you think doctor's offices, hospitals, some, something clinical. But when it comes to early detection, there's an entirely different army of workers being recruited to spot early signs of skin cancer. And when you see who it is, you'll understand why it makes perfect sense. There's certain patients that you'll never forget. And he, I remember him saying, you know, I was in Vietnam and I've been a firefighter in Boston and I have never felt as the pain and horror as going through this treatment. When research nurse Sandy Alton talks about cancer, it's with pain and determination. For this project, I'm passionate because melanoma has always been one of, you know, the hardest to treat. Learned about a unique training that teaches people about skin cancer. She wrote a grant and got unlimited access to free courses. This is so smart. Health and beauty worlds can collide. The video focuses on the one place that's often overlooked and teaching the one person that probably knows it best. You're a hairdresser and who sees the head of your client more than you do? Nobody. This one is something I'd probably say to the say to her, you know, have you had this looked at? Lisa Lowe Gaddis is Sandy's hairstylist. She took the melanoma course almost a year ago and has been keeping a closer eye on all her clients since. I have had two little boys that came in and had something unusual, so I told the mother and um, it turned out it wasn't anything serious, but they're still keeping an eye on it. So we took pictures and that way every time I do their hair, I can look at it and make sure it hasn't changed. One in five Americans will develop skin cancer. Numbers are increasing every year, but there's a 98% chance of survival if caught early. I have had so many run-ins with cancer and if I can prevent it, I believe early detection is the key. More than 11,000 hairstylists nationwide have taken the Eyes on Cancer course. The goal is to train 20,000 hairstylists by 2020. They're like, wow, we could actually save a life. You absolutely could save a life. Not only am I helping people feel good about their looks, but I can also help them stay healthy. So really the goal is to get anyone to take this course and then tell their hairdresser to take it too. You can visit hairstylistmelanomachallenge.com to get the code to take it for free. The Indiana University Hoosiers have made their way to Florida and they're gearing up for the 75th Gator Bowl. The team arrived in Jacksonville on Saturday and wasted no time hitting the field for practice Sunday. The Hoosiers will be facing off against the Tennessee Volunteers. The two teams have met once before in the 1988 Peach Bowl. Tennessee came away with the wind. IU is making its 12th overall bowl appearance and third in the last five years. Kickoff for the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl is set for 7 o'clock on Thursday, January 2nd. Go Hoosiers. That's big of me, right? I'm a Purdue grad. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you, Kevin. <laughs>
<laughs> Look at you. Yeah, equal opportunity. we got to root for the Indiana teams. Okay, I don't know if you're rooting for any snow, but we have some the snow showers and flurries across central Indiana. Not a big deal. All the cloud cover is going nowhere over the next couple of days. I think we'll see sunshine on New Year's Day. That's a good way to start 2020. As far as our temperature, staying cold the next 24 hours is the coldest 24 hours within the seven-day forecast. Snow showers tomorrow or light snow may accumulate an inch or less north and east of Indy and will continue with these wind gusts to 30 miles per hour or stronger through tomorrow afternoon. Right now, temperature from 36 in Indy, a few degrees cooler in Kokomo and Howard County and Bloomington. We're just talking about IU. West wind at 16 and 38 is the actual temperature. Tomorrow morning, western half of the state, a little colder than the eastern portion of Indiana. As our morning goes on, the chance for the snow showers will increase, especially north and northeast of Indy. Temperatures don't move a whole lot and they'll barely climb above the freezing mark. It will never feel that warm with the wind out of the southwest at about 20 miles per hour. Temperatures tomorrow average 36, 37 degrees will be below average for the first time in a long time. New Year's Day, the change the sun comes back out. It won't be as windy, and we'll also see temperatures climb into the low 40s to start 2020. We'll have your complete four-day forecast coming up. Isolation can be a painful reality for aging Americans. It's proven to affect daily life and even lead to early death. Elizabeth Ruiz looks at how some groups are helping seniors. Four days every week. Bill and Brenda Bowman pack food for meals on wheels. It's a national program that empowers communities to address senior isolation and hunger by delivering nutritious meals to those who are homebound and can't make food for themselves. Bill and Brenda became volunteers in 2011. We started honestly in what we think is obedience to the Lord. And as we did that, we were rewarded. We have met some awesome people. Seniors in isolation often experience loneliness. It's becoming one of the biggest threats to seniors. For that reason, the Gene Griswold Foundation, which aims to enhance the quality of life for low-income seniors, recently announced it will donate 40% of its 2019 proceeds toward Meals on Wheels America to combat the issue. It's so sad that some people have nobody. That funding is supporting national efforts to address senior isolation through the expansion of tools local Meals on Wheels programs use. They need to know somebody cares. Knowing somebody cares can make a big difference in the health of a senior. My name is Dr. Samantha Farrow and I'm a psychologist here at the UC Health Seniors Clinic. Dr. Farrow says she asks every single patient about loneliness because she knows how impactful it is on both mental and physical health. Loneliness is related to things like heart disease, anxiety and depression, um, weakened immune system, and even death. According to Dr. Farrow, a lot of older folks who tell her they're experiencing loneliness have recently lost a spouse. When it comes down to it, Dr. Farrow says social interaction is mostly what these people need. We're all hardwired to be social animals. I mean, as a human species, that's something we all need. And that's where Meals on Wheels comes in. Knock, knock. Hi, Brenda. Hello. One of Bill and Brenda's daily clients is Carol DeBoer. Carol says she's lived a long and happy life with her five daughters and husband, Melvin. Such soulmates. Oh. But Carol lost her husband in 2002 and has been living alone ever since. We would have been married 50 years, but he died three days before that date. After his passing, Carol says she experienced a loneliness she had never felt before. I felt like I was just all alone. The children, I knew I had children and everybody, but... So I had to really recognize there was a greater power in me than me. Carol says she learned to lean on her faith in God, and she started getting counseling. Now Carol says she's able to focus on the positive, like the family she's found through Meals on Wheels. The love grows, it never dies. Carol says she feels very blessed, and she wants others to know it's always okay to ask for help. If you want help, there's help out there. And also, if you have family, tell them, please. Ask them to help you get the help that you need. I'm Elizabeth Ruiz reporting. Elizabeth, thank you.
Well, social media can turn into an addiction and may lead people to go see a therapist. Ahead, one psychologist talks about how dopamine fasting can help us unplug.